Pokemon booster boxes are going absolutely insane. Hey, my name's Colin. This is the Poke Office. Today we're looking at the last three months of Sword and Shield booster boxes. They're going nuts. You're going to love it. So I have a uh, slideshow for you to see. Then we're going to open some packs. It's going to be an awesome video. Okay, starting at the very start, we have Sword and Shield base going right back to the start of Sword and Shield era. This one in the last three months has gone up by 10.8%, started at $235.23. That's back on October 25th. Today, upwards of $260. So it's taken a big jump in the last, uh, I want to say even the last month, kind of end of November, it started climbing and it maybe has leveled off a little bit, but Sword and Shield base going insanely good, 10.8% up. Moving on to Rebel Clash, we have 14.46% increase over the last three months. So it started at $189.24 on October 25th. Then we it took a little bit of a, a down, but barely. And then it has just been straight up climbing over the $200 mark into the 215 range which is also insane, 14.46% increase. I just don't, like, I get it, they're old. These uh, Sword and Shield base set plus Rebel Clash, old, but there is no cards that that are worth a lot of money. It's just the fact that they're old, they're out of print. I don't think Pokemon is going to be reprinting these sets anytime soon, if ever. So these booster boxes are just getting harder and harder to find. Now, moving to Darkness Ablaze, this one we're going to see a little bit different. Started at $130 three months ago, and now we're at $134. So it did take a big rise here at the end of November, like the other booster boxes. But now, I don't know if this is just a blip on the radar or if people have been selling it cheaper. Maybe it couldn't handle this price point at the time being. But it went all the way up to uh, over 146, almost hit $150 right here. Now it's back down to 134.93, but still an increase, 3.45% increase. So still doing something. Um, you're going to see the same with Vivid Voltage here, kind of up and down, up and down. It's it's trying to increase, but the market just can't sustain these uh, prices currently. But we started three months ago at $124, ending at $127.50. But this one also hit that like $135 range. So these prices are, I don't know, it, like these older sets, some of them, the market is just trying to figure out what it's doing. But again, these older sets out of print. I don't think Pokemon has any plans to reprint them. And uh so it's just getting harder and harder to find these booster boxes. Battle styles, here is one to watch out for. This is a less popular um, booster box, less popular set out of Sword and Shield. Uh, it was well below $100 for quite a long time. I actually, when I bought this booster box for my collection a couple months ago, uh, I think I bought it in like the $85 range. So maybe it was 90 I can't quite remember but it hit this uh, floor right here in that $85 range even a little bit below it but since the end of November it has just been shooting up now worth $105 so from October 25th to now it is uh, up 15.31 percent so that is one to watch if you are wanting to get one I think this one is going to go up I uh not financial advice of course but I don't think that Battle Styles is going to be printed either. Chilling Rain, this is the biggest one of the bunch. Had a little blip right at the start in October, but started at $100, ending at almost $130. Absolutely insanely good return, up 29%. And it has just been straight up climbing. This next one, Evolving Skies, is a head scratcher to me because... For the past little while, we've seen it just up, 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 up. It's starting at $257. This one is really in hot debate right now on people I follow on YouTube and on Reddit and everything. Some people think it's going to be reprinted. Some people don't think it's going to be reprinted. I just don't even know. 
part of me thinks that it's not going to be because uh, MSRP on Scarlet and Violet is going up with that coming out soon. And we have the newer sets to reprint, like Brilliant Stars, Astro Radiance, Lost Origin, Silver Tempest, which haven't even really had a reprint yet, to my knowledge. So I don't know if Pokemon's going to go back to Evolving Skies, but my goodness, these prices are insane. It's taken a, quite a big drop here. I was looking into the data a little bit more on TCG Player, and there's been quite a few sales of loose booster packs but 36 booster packs. So not actually the sealed booster box. So I think that has something to do with it. I wouldn't be surprised if this is just a little blip on the radar and it shoots back up into that $300 range pretty quick. But again, this is just me speculating. I'm not sure. If you take it where it is now, $268, it had a 4.37% increase. But if you take it at that high, it was up almost 25%. Insane. Okay, Fusion Strike, another really good one that just keeps on climbing. It went below $100 a couple times in early November, and now it is at $127, up 23% in the last three months. This one, I really think, this is my personal opinion, that Chilling Rain and Fusion Strike are the sleepers of the Sword and Shield era. I think there's just some awesome cards in both of these sets that don't get enough love right now. And I wouldn't be surprised if these become more popular as time goes on. Okay, moving on, we're into the 2022 sets. So these ones all came out in 2022, starting with Brilliant Stars. This one shocks me because the booster packs are not all that expensive. The booster box on TCG Player keeps going up. It's up 9.59% up to $184.72. You can still buy this booster box on PokemonCenter.com for MSRP. So I don't know why this one keeps increasing, uh, but it does. So this is a popular set. It's got the Charizard. It's got the Arceus. So I don't know. It's uh, been a pretty nice upward climb over the last three months. Okay, Astral Radiance, this one is crazy. Look at this climb in the last month time. It was kind of sitting all around that $100 to $105 mark. And now in the last month, it has climbed to almost $117 for a 14.36% increase. This one, starting with Brilliant Stars and forward, I would not be surprised to see another reprint. Other people that I've watched are saying that there's a reprint probably coming in end of February to early March. I don't talk to distributors, so I don't know anything. I'm just passing on information that I've watched and that I've heard from other people that I follow. I wouldn't be surprised if this one, Lost Origin and Silver Tempest and Brilliant Stars get the reprint because uh, they're still in rotation for the actual card game as well, not just for collection. Um, but this one, a nice increase over the last month. Lost Origin, also a very nice increase over the last three months. Kind of leveled off at like it had spiked. If you go back a little farther on this graph, it had spiked pre-release. Then it dropped down. It has kind of been sitting in that $105 range for a while. And now over the last three months, stock stores, from what I've heard, are having a really hard time keeping booster boxes in stock. So they just can't do it. There's not enough to go around. So these things continue to rise. This one is up 25.13%. What a great return on investment, especially if this doesn't come back down with a reprint. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm speculating, but my goodness. Pokemon right now, keeping sealed collection is not a bad idea in my opinion. It's It's hot. Okay, last one, Silver Tempest, the last booster box of Sword and Shield era, sitting at in that like $105 range, 103.40 actually, at the end of October. And now we had this little blip. I think that's what we're going to see on the, on the other one there too, Evolving Skies is going to have a little blip and then go up. But Silver Tempest had this little blip. That might just be a one-off sale on TCG Player to cause that. Someone sold really cheap or something or a glitch. I'm not sure. But then right back up, and now it has been on the climb again, up to $125.08. 
which is almost a 21% increase over the last three months. And if you can continue getting 20% increases over three months, you're going to be a rich man in very short order. Now, I know that might not be feasible for the long term, but these 20% gains are awesome. So now, of course, we're going to open some packs on the Pokey office. Let's uh, get into it. I have five packs of Silver Tempest, Lost Origin, Fusion Strike, and Chilling Rain. So let's see if we can pull some bangers. Okay, so let me know what uh, you thought about that slideshow. I think Pokemon cards are a decent investment. Not that I'm giving you financial advice because I'm not by any means, but uh, pretty cool. So in uh, I got five packs starting at Chilling Rain and moving forward. So we got Chilling Rain first, then we have Fusion Strike. Let's see if we got anything we do not. So Bite Bar. Uh, then into Lost Origin, and then into Silver Tempest. So, like, it's going crazy, and I get it, because as things start to age, I think people also just recognize how collectible Pokemon cards are right now. So, I have a feeling that this era of Pokemon is going to be known for, like, a lot of sealed product. There's probably lots out there, but people still hoping that uh, the increases are gonna come. Ooh, Volcanion V, there's our first hit of the video. Pretty nice. Um, another thing, I'm gonna do a video pretty soon on ETBs because those, the market for those are also going pretty well for an investment. Um, but then you look at something where they actually did overprint it, like the Charizard UPC, and so many stores still have those on the shelves. Like it's, it's kind of funny. I think uh, it feels like Pokemon Company is really trying to figure out how much they need to print of things. Like Charizard UPC was overprinted, and the Celebrations UPC was underprinted. Like that thing is going nuts. That was before I kind of got back into Pokemon. I wish I had a copy of that, but currently can't afford like the three or four hundred dollars that that thing is going for. Um, what else? ETBs are doing well. Booster boxes are going up. So I don't know. They're they're trying to figure it out. And then the reprints, evolving skies going absolutely nuts. Walrein. Okay, last pack of Chilling Rain. Let's see if we can get anything. Well, we did get a beat guard, which is not terrible. There we go. Um, so, I don't know. I'm definitely wanting to grow my sealed collection. I made a video uh, a while back already. I bought every Sword and Shield booster box and Anthros. So not too much in Chilling Rain. But yeah, I bought every booster box in uh, Sword and Shield. I actually can't remember what it cost me. I know in Canadian it cost me close to 2200 bucks. So I think it was like in the realm of 1800 USD. Um, and all of those are looking awfully good right now based on what we just witnessed on the slideshow. So I'm looking forward to keeping that rolling. Centiscore. Do you guys uh, like sealed product? Do you just rip everything that you get your hands on? Let me know in the comments below. What is your collectible piece? Or do you just like watching Pokemon? Everything is good. Any Anyone that is into the Pokemon hobby, I am fine with whatever you do. You can play the card game, you can collect sealed product, you can collect the cards. Like, I don't care. I just love that Pokemon is is uh, making a comeback here. I don't know what just happened, but hopefully nothing. Come on, baby. Cladle. All right, my hands are uh, not doing well with ripping the Pokemon cards right now. I keep grabbing extra ones, so gotta work on that. Come on, 
Hit the like button if you haven't yet. Give me some good luck. I can feel it through the screen. You know it, baby. Let's see what we got. I feel like we got something. Yeah, we do. Come on, three, two, one. Gengar. Sick. One of my favorite all-time Pokemon, honestly. If only it was the alt art. If only. We got one more chance at it, though. All right. Last pack of Fusion Strike. So what can we do with it? What can we do with it? Latios. All right, so we are not running too hot right now. Hopefully, Lost Origin can change everything. Pull the Giratina, I'm gonna lose my mind. And then, ah, I wish, I wish. Speaking of Giratina, the gold Giratina coming out, seeing the cards from Crown Zenith look amazing. Radiant Steelix into a Bascule Legion. Hollow. All right, we got the Radiant Steelix card. Not too bad. Not too bad. I don't think it's worth very much, but we'll put it up on the board anyways as a hit. That's what's so nice about these newer sets. They got all the uh, chances at Radiant cards at the Trainer Gallery. Apparently, from what I've been watching, the Crown Zenith pull rates is it's actually hard to get all of the reverse hollows because there's so many Galarian gallery cards in it. Spirit Tomb. So one of the guys I watch actually like he's trying to complete a total master set which means all of the regular cards plus all of the reverse holo cards in there as well and he's missing quite a few of them because the pull rates are so big on the Clarion Gallery because there's 70 of them rather than 30. So you're just you're pulling a Galarian Gallery card like in half the patch or something like that. It's insane. Another Radiant card and into a Porygon Z. So two Radiant cards out of Lost Origin today. Interesting. Not really what we want but we'll keep going. Two packs left of Ray, er, Lost Origin. And then into Silver Tempest. Still, look at that. Quality control Pokemon. My goodness, it is not been good. It's actually really sad. The other thing that I've been seeing, apparently Crown Zenith is better. There's a Gengar. It's all about Gengar today, baby. That's awesome. Hoopa. But yeah, from what I've been seeing, the quality control on Crown Zenith is better, but still not very good. Like some of the Pikachu alt, not alt, uh, Pikachu secret rares are way off center. Like it's just no good at all. Okay, we got our last pack of Lost Origin. Then we'll move on to Silver Tempest. One more chance, as always, to pull that one card that I want. It's actually multiple, but there's the one. You know what I'm talking about if you've watched any of my videos. Seal into a Compi. How is that even a rare card? I don't get it. Whatever. Okay, Silver Tempest, here we go. The uh, magic has not been there today so far. Could all change. Anyways, we got the booster boxes anyways, and they are going crazy which I like a lot. Come on now. Dawn Fan into a Metagross Hollow. Silver Tempest. I am really curious to know what these reprints are going to do in Sword and Shield. Earth and Seal Stone. All right, all right. Um, yeah, like like I said during the presentation, I've, I've heard some speculation that there's going to be no reprints. I don't think that's true. 
I've heard lots of speculation that there's gonna be a few reprints, end of February, early March, right before Scarlet and Violet. And then people are saying like, oh, they won't reprint this stuff because of the yellow borders moving to silver borders. Like, I think that's just paint on the cardboard. So I don't think that's it. Cricketune, V, sweet. Talonflame, that is number 20, or sorry, number 12, can't read. Um, but these cards are still in gameplay. Like people who actually play the card game need to have stock available that they can like pull cards for the tournaments and stuff like that. So what does that mean? Um, I just don't have the answer. I wish I did. Because if I knew that they weren't reprinting anything, I probably would buy a few more boxes right now while I think they're still cheap. Because if you look at the X and Y boxes, man, the trainer galleries are coming in full force today and into a Delphox. If you look at the X and Y era booster boxes, like they're all insanely priced. And it makes sense. They're older now. It's hard to find them. People, like they're just, those are not gonna be reprinted. So if you held on to those for five years now, like the Evolutions one is a thousand bucks, 800 bucks, something like that. Like it's insane. So Pokemon cards over time, if it continues to stay popular, this is the last pack by the way. If it continues to stay popular, things might be good. We got a Radiant Alakazam and last card in three, two, one, Gardevoir, non hollow rare. Well, it wasn't the best. We got lots of trainer galleries out of the last two, Lost Origin and Silver Tempest. Not a ton else. Let's just quickly take a look. We got Al Radiant Alakazam, we got the Jinx, we got the Cricketune V trainer gallery card. We got Radiant Gardevoir. We got Radiant Steelix. We got the Gengar trainer gallery. And then we got the regular Gengar V, cool looking card, and a Volcanion V. All right, that's gonna do it. Make sure to let me know if you like this type of content. The booster boxes, in my opinion, of Pokemon are just going crazy right now. I think it's gonna continue whether the reprints come or not. There always seem to be a good option if you're willing to hold on to them for a few years. But let me know what you think. I'm curious, I will respond. My name's Colin, this is the Poke Office. I'll see you on my next video.